The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin on the Soybean School, joined again by Matt Chappell, uh, Pride Agronomist. Matt, how's it going? It's going well, Bern. Always happy to join you. Hey, Matt, last year you and I talked about fixed versus flexed hybrids in corn. This year I want to talk about fixed versus flexed soybeans. Tell me, how does the, I guess, the concept transfer from corn to soybeans? Yeah, a lot of similarities, Bern. It's a pretty interesting thing. We really looked at some different genetics. We wanted to say, you know, we've always classified beans as bushy, slender. Uh, we talked about populations. We've talked about row widths. Many of the same principles, Bern. When we have that flex corn hybrid, you know, at lower populations, the year gets bigger, longer, girthier. Same with the soybean plant. A flex soybean variety really has that potential to bush out uh, multi nodes, more pods per node, all those great things. Or at that more fixed style bean, we're more mo single stemmed, top to bottom. We don't fill out and fill the rows of the canopies as good with that more fixed style. So more conducive to pushing the population, much like corn hybrids that are fixed ear styles. Yeah. Talk about this plot now, Matt. You've uh, you thinned out obviously this uh, plot here to show these how these beans are flexing. What uh, what are your populations here? Yeah. So rewind just a moment. Last year we had 24 inch rows on some real rich high fertility loam. Things were phenomenal there. We really realized the difference in different genetics and saw some nice a real change in economics. Actual economic seeding rate to maximum yields. In here. We're 30 inch rows. We took it down to one plant per foot in the row. So, you know, we're sub 20,000 population. No one's ever gonna plant 20,000 uh, seeds in a, in a bean crop, okay? I realize that. But what we really wanna do is display our genetics and see what they can do. Look at pod counts, look at seeds per pod and pods per node. Talk about, I guess, where this fits on the farm from a, from a strategic perspective, from a grower's perspective. How do you tackle you know, making the decision to potentially you know, push a flex bean on, on your dirt? Great question. I'm a 15 inch bean guy, okay? So farm Brookston clay down to some sand, uh, sharp sand, but we always want to follow that rotation. We put beans on those sand farms. On that sand where it really doesn't make sense to put a, a high population on because of risk of it burning up or falling over, um, we want to look at something maybe that has that, uh, that flex potential that's maybe going to you know, fill out a bit and withstand, give us the maximum return. But if we're on that clay farm, you know, we've always been taught survivability is the issue, getting them all out of the ground together. We want to look at more of that fixed style. We're going to grow a higher population to meet the equipment that we have on that 15 inch row. So we're going to go with that fixed style we're going to get the most out of that seed. We're going to look at getting their population right. And that is truly the best fit. Or where we have disease issues. Maybe we have some phytophthora pressure and we're going to lose some stand. Another reason to go with that fixed style, get that population up a little more. That flex variety, maybe we want to lower the population because we have a white mold concern. Look at where those beans can really bush out. We can lower the population and really maximize our ROI on our seed investment. So Matt, final point, I want to go back to the, your research last year and you really did prove almost that you know you can really plant a flex bean like that at very low populations and really get some nice yields. Um, I mean that's got to count for a something when a guy's making this decision. Yeah exactly. So we had three different varieties that we really honed in on, very different, a true flex, a true fixed and somewhere in between and on that medium flex uh, variety, we actually realized an economic return of about 80,000 seeds. Why were we thinking we could go that low? Based on it was a high fertility farm. We knew that when we pushed populations of 150, 160,000 that we had issues with things like white mold and standability. So a lot of things were conducive in that environment actually to allow us to drop the population down and realize that maximum economic return at about 80,000. But when we went even lower to about 60,000 last year, well, 
we didn't quite like the results. We found more of the, the optimal in the 80 to 100,000 range. And then when we got higher, yeah, the yield was there still in the higher populations, but not the most economic return for our seed investment. So mm -hmm. a lot of reasons why we should really consider knowing the difference between flex and fixed soybeans. <laughs>